You won't find a cast of characters like this everywhere. Hello, Paul. Delicious. This particular episode of the Shy Life is, is a little more abstract. <laughs> okay, it looks like the hairy guy is ready to record. Three, two, one. Go Shy Yeti. Oh, I hope he hasn't found out my secret. I think he has. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the Shy Life Podcast with me, Paul the Shy Yeti. How are you doing? I'm all right. Yes, uh, we're back again this time to to talk about some music. And Martin's back as well. Hi, Martin. Hello. Uh, hello. Yes, How are you doing? Uh, not too bad. And uh, well, we're going to enter a new decade this uh, this episode. Um, we're going to we're going to end up colliding with you and Nick. Working yes, we are. Yes, I think we've probably got about <laughs> five years we can you and I can do, and then we then we'll either go back to the fifties, or go to Australia, uh, or but well, we'll see how we go. <laughs> yes, we'll find some we'll find some way. Yes, to go. but uh, so we have nineteen seventy, and uh, I've got lots of facts and figures, and and, and uh, after I've run the main theme music, we'll, we'll get stuck into them. Let's run that theme music. Time for my old buddy, old pal, from across the channel, across the pond. Bob Chandler, the shy daddy. He's not that shy. Oh, it's the shy life podcast. Yeah. All I wanted was a pie. And then I hatched out of an egg. Okay, bring the mic over. He's ready to record. It's the quiet ones you've got to watch, you know. Is it metaphorical? Is it, is it deep? Is it deep? Oh, boy. He's not all that shy is right. Blimey, Governor, it's the Shy Life Podcast. If you thought that was bad, just listen to this. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for it to begin. It's the Shy Life Podcast. It's positively glowing. <laughs> and we're back. And I should mention, although you... The 70s got so much more spangle in the music, yes. hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because... Um, I've been influenced by the 1969 episode in that um, when we talked about the number ones, I, I don't know, in the back of my mind, I, th- I thought when we talked about Sugar Sugar by the Archies, I thought, mm. well, uh, I, I guess, that, you know, that they're a cartoon band. They might actually be of interest to me in a sort of, in the same way that, that the monkeys are in, of interest to me. Um, yes. So I, for about two or three weeks, I had a, an open document with the Wikipedia page of the Archies mm. intending to actually listen to other Archie songs, which mm. I eventually did do, and then discovered that there were, you know, a lot of, of pretty good Archie songs, not just Sugar right. Sugar. In, along, it, so you went down an so Archie's down rabbit, rabbit, hole. rabbit hole to the point where I've actually wow. bought. I think I now I'm now the proud owner of about three or four Archie's vinyl from the you know original pressing. <laughs> the entire Archie's yeah. back catalogue. They'll be they'll be so grateful they've had them in their the garage for forty years. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but um, unfortunately, wow. it's not. So, what did you discover? Well, uh, I, I discovered that they did five albums um, between okay. nineteen sixty eight and nineteen seventy one. And uh, did they write most of their own stuff, or was it mostly written? It, you know, like like Neil was, Diamond yeah, wrote it the was, it was Sort of written by people who. Who who knew their stuff and had uh, other hits behind them and the the, the main right. lead singer it was is sort of in, involved pretty much all the way through and is quite a, a well known singer in America mm-hmm. for being on other hits as well of other by other people and um, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah I, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed uh, um, listening to them they are very bubble gum but I, oh, you know, well. that's not not a bad thing unfortunately. We won't be coming across them again in 1970 because they... Uh, they've shot their yeah, bolt in 69. Yeah, they, <laughs> they did have more than one hit in the States. Well, um, hmm. but they, they just had Sugar Sugar in the UK. 
but um, mm. it's a shame because because some of the songs that they did have other lesser hits with in the states, I wouldn't say were mm. even the best songs. Um, mm. the, uh, the, I mean, Sugar Sugar is definitely a good a, a good one, but there are other ones which I like yeah. far more, and also album tracks I like far more than some of their lesser singles. Um, so, had you heard any of these before? No, or were they all no, new, new to me. Um, mm. But you know, there, there's literally nothing familiar from the Archies no, apart from some Sugar Sugar. Yeah, um, oh. they don't even do, as far as I can remember, they don't do even do a, you know cover versions of a famous song, you know, like mm. as, fill, as filler, so these, which oft, often bands did do the odd, um, yeah. the, the odd uh, cover versions. But so these chats are starting to cost you a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> Let's let's see who we can find in 1970 to wipe out your bank balance this well, month. I mean, the funny thing is, I, I read an article with uh, Michael Stipe, which I can't remember. Oh yes. If he if he was talking about it in at the time or more recently, possibly somewhere in between. But he was talking about shiny happy people and how, even though that was very popular for them, it, it's not their favourite song to perform because it's no. not very representative of the rest of their stuff. Mm. Um, but. They, he was saying that when they wrote it, they want they wrote it as an ode to bands like the Monkees and the Archies, which they are the age to have grown up with. Um, yes. So, so it, it was nice to sort of read that and see how you know it, the, they they were something that he thought or the band thought was worthy of of um, you know this is a, a genre of, that it'd be nice to write a song in that style. Which uh, I must admit that uh, that when you when we do these recordings i do tend to find that uh, when i'm cooking over the next couple of weeks i do tend to pull something off the shelf that that we've been yeah. talking about so uh, it, it's definitely it definitely triggers something yeah. in you you know uh, i mean i find that, that certainly since not so much when i was buying vinyl but, but when i started buying um cds i i started buying more compilations mm. than necessarily albums you know i i have filled in some gaps since but uh, sort of best mm. ofs and greatest hits and stuff so, but they actually sort of sit quite well when you're uh, when you're sort of chopping vegetables. They really do. They, they... It wasn't that I needed to spend money to hear the Archies. That came later. I was mm. able to hear everything I wanted to because I went on Spotify mm. and there was like the the top fifty or like a playlist of fifty best um, Archie songs. And then I, they even had the album. Mm-hmm. So I'd listen to everything before I decided to start Crikey. buying them. So I, I, it's not mm. like you used to where you thought well i think i might quite like you know that that, that band so i'll buy an album and, mm. and you had to part with the money before you um you know before before you you, you heard and sometimes you were disappointed but uh, uh that's the one one of the good things about digital music that uh, um mm. but i i do find that listening to vinyl now is is a better way of sort of focusing because you know, you, I, I can't wander around the house with my earphones in because I start dragging the, the record player around the house with me, which, you know, unless it's on, on wheels. You should get it on, on wheels. wheels. It'd look like, it'd look like Arcturus, wouldn't it? Yeah. Around behind you. Well, <laughs> get a sort of bubbly top on well, it. Well, <laughs> listeners may remember that Yeti Uncle John had a, um, uh, a record player that um, had magical... Uh, he, when Toppy was teaching him to be a magician, he recorded mm. Yeti Uncle John a vinyl instruction manual, which um, and then Yeti Uncle John strapped his record player to his back and went out mm. outside and used it like a, a vinyl Walkman. But mm. uh, um, that's the th- that's the thing, really, isn't it? They don't work particularly well in cars, no. L- uh, LPs, vinyl LPs, or strapped to your back. And it's the same same thing. <laughs> the thing I always remember particularly is that when you say about you don't move. I actually felt when I when I had a record player, I don't move because if I moved across the room or walked across the room, the needle would just go. <laughs> Right across. <laughs> well, yeah, my 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 newer um, record player, the one I got for my birthday last year, is definitely mm-hmm. it's notable how much better it is than my old one, which was was nice, and, mm-hmm. and I could put it away, mm-hmm. and it didn't have to be on display the whole time. Um, but are, are modern ones still based on the needle, though, or do they have do they have a new way of doing no, it? Because still... I just remember every so often you had to go to Smiths and buy a needle for your record. And for about twenty years, you thought, how could anybody get yeah. one anymore? But yet, obviously, they've come back into fashion. Yeah, fashions. I mean, yeah, I sort of I sort of dread if anything breaks from trying to find it. But I'm sure, as it's a new modern record player, it won't be so difficult. But. Mm. Uh, uh, 
Tell that to my washing machine. <laughs> anyway, <Yeah. laughs> let's not yeah. dwell. So, well, I thought we will start with, as usual, a, f- a few facts. I, I should probably mm. um, ask you before factoid of the week. Of the I, year. I should ask you factoids of the year. I should ask you before we continue uh, if you think mm. you can remember anything from 1970. Uh, oh well, I mean, I. I uh, I think I've mentioned it before. I, the, the, the the most vivid, specific 1970 memory is, is the Cadbury's advert mm. for me, which is the in the supersonic whatever they were 70s. Isn't it nice to know they're still Cadbury's chocolates? One of today's great tastes. Mm. And um, and I do remember that, and that's how I can time that because a lot of my memories, it turns out, I think I was 12 and I was 15, or you know, or I think I was 12 and I was six, or you know what I mean. There's it sort of gets mashed up a bit sometimes, but I can specifically time that. And of course, in 1970, I would have been six, mm. so so there's not a great deal that I can, you know specifically remember I, I mean i can remember being at junior school and i can remember moments from that but i couldn't tell you you know i mean i could tell you if, when i was in mr phillips class or miss norman sells class or mrs machin's class or whatever from school from junior school so i know i know what year it was from the teacher yeah, yeah. if you see what i mean but that's about the only thing i've got i mean the other the other thing quite a few of us i suppose i can tell you what year certain things are because of the television i know i was mm. watching and knowing when it was broadcast, because being as as you are a, a fan of old television, you do tend to know more about the dates things were on, you know. So you know that that was nineteen seventy one because it's got Roger Delgado in it or whatever, you know. So um, yeah, it's 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 kind of weird. So nineteen seventy specifically, apart from a chocolate advert, and because I think we were, I mean, this was we were still in the era of space flight, moon landings. Yeah. And we were still in the... Uh, so I, w- I would have been interested in that. And, the, and I think we were also uh, still in the era... Oh, I've, I've lost my thread. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the, uh, so we had, I say, but moon landings were on television, but there was all sorts of I mean, colour television. We, we would have still had black and white television till around about 1974. But uh, I can sort of... I can just remember bits and pieces, you know. Um, but, yeah, it, it's a bit vague still. But we'll we'll see. I could say, you know, my sister was nine years older than me, so she would have been 15. So the music uh, was, I mean, she would have been proper teenager listening, buying singles and what have you. So actually the music that was in the house was probably a lot more familiar than a lot of you, you hadn't started watching Doctor Who, or if you had, you don't remember it? Um, I think my... It's interesting that I don't remember the 1970 series from broadcast i have a very strong memory of for some reason the opening scene of colony in space which i think is my earliest actual doctor who memory i think it is i i uh because i also do remember you know the the people applauding when the master was caught at the end of the demons but I think that must have been from the repeat because it was about the time of the repeat that I became, quotes, a fan, if you see what I mean. I can genuinely remember being excited because there was a repeat of the Sea Devils, for example, really excited because it came on unexpectedly when the cricket was supposed to be on. All that kind of thing. So, so I don't think 1970 quite, quite was on my radar. I mean, we may have watched it. I may have been in the room. I literally, you know... Kids being kids at that age, I may have been playing with my Lego and not really paying much attention. Well, <laughs> or having a yeah. nap. Um, well, there, there were one or two very famous bands that disbanded in 1970, the Beatles being the most yeah, right. um, famous. Of course, uh, yes. Also the Bonzo Doodah band, <laughs> although they did reform. Aww. And Simon and Garfunkel. 20 minutes yeah. later. <laughs> and Simon and Garfunkel split up, but uh, they again did things together later on. But... Uh, Ah oh, well, the concert in uh, Central Park LP or double LP is is one one of my f- finest uh, vinyl possessions. Actually, yeah. I do like that. Although again, it's one of those ones that I had on vinyl and then never bought mm. as a mm. CD. Oddly, which I've done a lot. This, that's that's the thing that always surprises me as I've not replaced quite yeah. a lot of them. So they are actually on a shelf, never to be heard yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the Dave Clark Five also split up, although the, they. Right. Became Dave Clark and friends for a few years after ah, that. So they became the Dave Clark yes. Four, the Dave yeah. Clark Three. It's a bit like Genesis; they just kept yeah. chipping away. <laughs> um, so other events uh, that occurred. 
Uh, Sid Barrett released his first solo album, The Madcap Laughs. Um, mm. Wow. Because that would have been based on his reputation, mm. I suppose. Mm. Uh, because by then he'd been famously, um, hadn't he? Yeah. Gone famously into his recluseness, yeah, yeah. but uh, and, and for for uh, was it was it drug related reasons? Mm, I, yeah, I, I, think, I vaguely remember yeah. there was some well, or something some, something triggered by by, by the yeah. drugs. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, what I was saying is that would have been probably a, <laughs> a, a good selling yeah. point in some ways because that was that was the thing people knew him from in, in the public yeah. domain. <laughs> it's quite sad. But, yeah. um, the, the day after that happened, uh, Keith Moon from the Who ran over his ran over and killed his chauffeur, um, trying to escape from a mob outside a outside a pub. Um, but oh, the, oh, the uh, death is later ruled an accident. Um, but mm. even so, that's uh, that's not a story yeah. I'd heard before. Mm. That that's. Uh, that's um, I, mean, I know I know Keith Moon's yes. ultimate fate yeah. was uh, was not not great but I think that probably sort of in many ways over you know I mean that that's not, not want not wanting to bring it into the sort of current media thing but these kinds of things with like Barrymore and stuff they can ruin careers now you know you know I mean and obviously you know I mean obviously if it's deliberate and terrible terrible thing that happens and it's and it obviously does much worse things for the chauffeur yeah. but uh, it is interesting how how people can carry on after things like that in certain eras and in other eras there. Um, on the 14th of January, uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes performed for the last time together at the Frontier Hotel in oh, Las right. Vegas. Uh, Supremes did have a yes. career on their own. Yeah, they got a, they, they yes. got a replacement. Um, but, uh, mm. And then on the 16th of January, John Lennon's London Art Gallery exhibit of lithograms, Bag One, is shut down by Scotland Yard for displaying erotic lithographs. Uh, I, hope, or, I hope this doesn't happen to August Evans. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, well, it's, it depends, really. I mean, they, they might. They, it, 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 sometimes art is in the eye of yeah. the beholder. They might not necessarily be meant as yeah. erotic. It might be more erratic. I don't know, but uh, if they are erotic, maybe it's just the eye of the eye of everything the viewer. Is, everything's more <laughs> erotic on a podcast. <laughs> no, it's a plate of sausages, officer. <laughs> well, it's the it's your imagination <laughs> on a podcast, so you can imagine whatever. You, Indeed, what one listener might call in and complain that uh, the art <laughs> is erotic. <laughs> How very dare uh, you! That's what you imagined, <laughs> late, um, my dear. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's quite um, right too. Tells you more about your mind, yeah. dear, than yes, absolutely. Um, also, in, it's very busy January. I won't go through as much detail in other mm. months, but um, on the twenty sixth of January, Simon Garfunkel released "Bridge Over Troubled Water," that album. Um, right. So they'd actually split up before, uh, or, or I was think that, that happens during the year. Um, ah, okay. but yeah. Um, what else can I say? Uh, the film The Magic Christian, starring Peter Sellers and Ringo Starr, is premiered in New York City. The film soundtrack al album, including Bad Fingers, Come and Get It, written by Paul McCartney, is released on Apple Records. I don't think I've ever seen that film, although I, I know that I know no. of it. I mean, I know the title. But, uh, it sounds like mates getting together and yeah. having a lark. It's like sort of Frank, Frank Sinatra's Ocean Eleven, yeah. Ocean's Eleven. It's it's kind of same kind yeah, of thing. Um, yeah. And um, and also in February, Ringo Starr appears on Rona Martin's Laughing. Um, right. Um, what? I do like Laughing. I, I, have you yeah, seen I've seen I've episodes? seen the first few episodes because they're on Prime. In fact, I think quite a lot of it's on Prime. Mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. uh, they used to be on uh, I think mm -hmm. BBC Two or something donkeys years ago. Uh, you know, they started, and I really took to it. You know. It was completely bonkers, but the old suck it to me, 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 just yeah, and all that stuff with the door flaps, which I know other people tried to do, but uh, but yeah, wow, yeah. So Ringo Starr made yes. it to laugh. Uh, sorry, I've got a returning deals. Come and sit down. Um, yes, deals. Yes, you like 1970, don't you? Um, <laughs> uh, particularly the Archies, but we're not talking about the Archies this time. Um, Janis Joplin got fined two hundred dollars for using obscene language during a concert in Tampa, Florida. And um, this is even more bizarre. Cult, although I think I was aware of it, although I didn't realise it got to the stage of an actual album being released. 
Uh, on the 6th of March, mm. cult leader and suspected murderer Charles Manson releases an album titled Lie, the Love and Terror Cult to help finance his defence. So, mm. um, well, that worked out yes. well for him, didn't it? Um, um, on the 19th of March, David Bowie married Angie, um, or Angie Barnett, as she was then. Uh, Angie yeah. Barnett. Wow. Um, glam. There's glam, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> uh, Barnett to Bowie, and, you know, probably pretty much the same place in, in the school room. Yeah, yeah. Um, now on 10th of April Paul McCartney announced officially that he had left the Beatles um, right oh so so he left before they disbanded the other three yeah, yeah I mean the thing is on the, on in May Let It Be was released but that of course that had been recorded mm. before Abbey Road so um, uh, and funnily enough four days after Paul McCartney announced that um, Michael Nesmith announced that he'd left the Monkees so mm. um, but then I think the, there was at least one album where there was just two of them um, so. I do remember there being a, a few episodes of the TV show he wasn't in yeah. uh, towards the end mm. uh, and it, it, or, or they'd, he'd be in on the footage of the band playing but not in the uh, performing bits you know they that the acted, but that must have been before he left the, the band because the TV series finished mm. in about '68, didn't it? So, mm. um, yeah, well, it's just odd, just odd to me that that I just remember that vividly there being episodes yeah. where it seemed to be just yeah. the three of them. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, this is an interesting one. I want, what it is for me because I I, uh, I like the Kinks and I also like um, mm. their song Lola on June the third. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kink singer Ray Davis makes a 6,000 mile round trip from New York to London and back, interrupting the band's American tour to re-record one word on their latest single Lola. In order to get any airplay in Great Britain, he has to change the word Coca-Cola to a more subtle Cherry Cola. I, I, I know that I knew that mm -hmm. that had happened, but uh, yeah, not quite how much was involved wow. in having to do that. But, uh, yeah. And now he'd have to isolate for yeah. 14 days. Well, uh, and now he, well, he'd better record <laughs> it and just email the sound file. Yeah, yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Do it in his bathroom. Um, Although, have you ever tried to patch in something that you've got yeah, wrong yeah. And, and try and get the same yeah, tom? <laughs> it's not easy. And, and, and in a song, it would be, um, you know, there's a, there's, there's, there's a few jumps in, in Charlotte's podcast episodes where I've had to do that, but uh, in a song, it's it sort of would completely spoil it. Yeah. You, you young professionals, you'd never <laughs> notice. You'd never notice. Uh, October the 4th, Janice Joplin is found dead in her bedroom. Um, uh, she was well, she was 27. She was, she was one of the 27 club. I don't know quite where that that thing about the 27 club started. If it was, I'm not right. quite sure who was the first to start. Well, not, the, not that they started mm. it, but it was, it was so, sort of... Mm. Uh, oh, just a minute... Um, I should, I've, I've read out of I've read it out of order because on the on the seventeenth of September, um, Jimi Hendrix uh, uh, dies, ah. um, and um, well no he, he no he makes his final appearance on the seventeenth and he dies on the eighteenth and he was twenty seven so that's mm. I guess with those two dying so close together um, and them both being the same age that might be where it came from or the sort of mm. um, oh my uh, I was going to say. Uh, no, I thought for a minute. I thought Jim Morrison went the same year, but it's October the thirtieth. Is, is when he's found yeah. guilty of indecent exposure. Well, I think he took his clothes off at a concert uh, in nineteen sixty nine. But uh, <laughs> you know. as you do. Um, but that's interesting because again, people look for patterns, don't they? I mean, what was the year a few years ago where lots of celebrities died and people were just going saying, "Oh, it's the year, it's the year," and it's just you know, it's probably no more than any other year, but. But people suddenly started seeing patterns that weren't necessarily there. You know. The yes, well, there's three, three more little things before, before we move on. Mm -hmm. um, the, it does say that on the 12th of December, the Doors play their final concert with singer Jim Morrison. Oh. Um, after the um, concert, the, the Doors decide they will not play live anymore due to Morrison's unpredictable live persona. Um, the, the, the other thing is that. The, even though Paul had left, yeah, well, he'd said he, he'd left, they, they didn't officially mm. announce that the band had split until the 31st of, of December 1970s. So, oh, I right. guess. Yeah. End of the year. Um, yeah. For, for yeah. tax reasons. Um, 
<laughs> the, 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 the last the last note um, the, as soon as we mentioned the first one I should mention this I didn't know about this one um, the on the 20th of November kink singer Ray Davies flies to London to a London studio to re-record another one word um, <laughs> and, and this time it's for the single eight man um, because uh, it's considered that the 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 line the air pollution is fogging up my eyes sounds too much like well some other word ah uh, uh, another word yes and, and, and to be fair it, it does a bit uh, half the time I'm not sure I don't know so what's the replacement yeah, I'm not sure actually they don't, they don't actually say what the oh, change okay. of line is um, oh. but uh, on the, on the, he still is dedicated isn't he he's old, a dedicated yeah. dedicated Dedic- He's a dedicated follower of changing lines in his song. recorder of uh, lines. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Perhaps he wrote wrote new lots of new songs as he was on the plane. So maybe in in the great scheme of things, it was a good. Well, that's that, that's around the time that I, I'm more of a fan of the '60s and very early '70s mm. up until that album um, of, of the Kinks. Um, mm. and, and then, but it's sort of after that they became more famous in America. And uh, although. I have listened to those albums, and every time I listen to them, I enjoy them more. That um, I, mm. I remember when I first listened to them back in the nineties, I, I didn't enjoy them as much. So they've taken longer to kind of, no. they, they, they just seem they sound a bit more like other bands mm. um, that are around. Whereas in the sixties, they're, they're kind of uh, yeah. having a, they seem to be more important, at least, at least in the UK music scene. Um, yeah. Still. Happy New Year, no yes. more Beatles. Happy New Year, no more Beatles. And, and so, we, we, we'll miss the Beatles in we our will. little chats. We, will. we might, we yeah. probably... Or the Beatles. Know, we, um, we don't act, they, and they don't actually have a number one. I'm sure they, they must have had, I'm sure they must have mm. some hits in 70, but they don't have number ones in 70, so we won't be discussing them much, mm. really, but... Uh, Crikey, there we go. Well, we should we should we should tip our hat and yeah. say a fond farewell. Um, so, all you need is all. <laughs> so we'll we'll obviously we'll start in the UK, and um, fortunately we start as we um, we start as we finished with the first four weeks of 1970. We have Rolf, Rolf Harris, two little boys, ah, um, yeah. because he he'd had two weeks at the end of '69, and. Uh, no, he has another, he has another four weeks. Six, so six, six weeks, weeks of that. Yeah. That's, that, that's amazing, yeah. isn't it? I mean, when you think about it, it's not even... You know, I mean, I know it's catchy, but... Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> there's, there's about four number ones this year that um, had six mm. weeks, and then there's one that has seven weeks. Um, mm-hmm. But the first, the first totally unique number one of the 70s... Mm. Um, is uh, a, f- a, f- a favorite, very famous one. Should it ever come up on point? <laughs> it, 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 Love Grows Where My Rosemary Goes by Edison Lighthouse. Ah, Edison Lighthouse. Well, I'm a bit fond of lighthouses, or at least uh-huh. I have been recently. So that's good. I should have used that. I should have thought of it. Never mind. I should have, should have put that on the top they, of my shirt. They, had, no they had five weeks in number one. I, what I don't know about them is wow. should, should I explore them? <laughs> should I explore their music and... Um, I, th- I think with the Archies, the initial jumping point was the cartoon side, although there isn't that much mm. that's readily available of, of the Archies in cartoon mm. form. Um, of course, the Edison Lighthouse was forever turning up on Blue Peter. I believe they put a hat on it eventually so they could land helicopters <laughs> on it so that Leslie Judd didn't have to go hurtling across in a bosun's yeah, chair. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so maybe maybe it's Edison Lighthouse before yeah. the hat. Um <laughs> It doesn't look like they did have any other hits. They had other singles, and um, mm. I think the highest they got in the UK was number forty-nine. And although they had a number three in New Zealand, they had a uh, they had a yeah, That's a bit they had a number three in New Zealand with <laughs> "She Works in a Woman's Way." <laughs> ah, whatever yeah, that means. And, but the what, what what for for half the yeah, money. <laughs> And, and to get molested yeah. by the boss. <laughs> um, uh, what is yeah, a woman's way the, of working? Uh, it's just the the, the, um, the one that got to number forty nine in the UK is called "It's Up to You, Petula." <laughs> Petula. Uh, I don't know if he's singing to Petula. Cl- that sounds like the answer to the yeah. other question, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh dear. Well, 
if you want to quit, that's up to you. <laughs> uh, and, and then there's another single called Everybody Knows. I think this story is... It's, uh, and, and, and another single called "What's Happening." This, this is there's a story amongst these. Um, yes, um, I think so. Yeah. And uh, and there's one single called "Find Mr. Zebedee." <laughs> yes, yes. I, 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 uh, yes. The song titles that uh, I maybe have to explore them when I'm editing. <laughs> mm. um, now our next number one for three weeks um, is a is it another kind of weird one which doesn't really feel like it fits in it's Wandering Star by Lee Marvin oh blimey Charlie I do remember okay. that crikey O'Reilly now actually that's, that is that that takes me right back to uh, oddly enough Prestatin Holiday mm. Camp for some reason don't know why don't know why my dad was particularly mumbling a bit of I mean, it's um, well. What, what's the film? Paint yeah. your wagon, isn't it? Paint your wagon. Interestingly, a film that uh, Clint Eastwood also sings. Yeah, in, yeah. Which is which is kind of peculiar, but yeah. No, I actually quite like Paint Your Wagon. I, I I remember seeing it one day. You know, it was on in the afternoon. I thought, oh bloody hell, what's this? You know, musical bar humbug. And and it, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it as a film. But uh, yeah, I do remember that being played a lot, and I do remember it associated with holiday. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, it, um, as you say, it came from Paint Your Wagon uh, from 1951, mm. but the film was made in 69, which is why it's doing so well in 70. So there is a reason. Do I know where hell is? Hell is in hello. Heaven is goodbye forever. It's time for me to go. <laughs> I'm just auditioning, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, you, uh, Ick, you're fired. How dare you, Paul? How dare you? Uh, well, <laughs> The thing is, really, all you have to do is... It sounds like you've just got a motorbike <laughs> engine and you go... Yeah. Oh, dear. I mean, you actually yeah. get it from that. Yeah. It's weird. You know? um, it's weird. Nah. And why you think... I mean, you can't imagine people sort of dancing down the disco to that, but it was obviously a yeah. massive hit. Yeah. You know? Now, our next number one is, as mentioned before, Bridge Over Troubled Water, The, the Song by ah, Simon Garfunkel. Simone yeah. and Garth Arkell. Got, to, they got uh, there for three weeks. And then followed by All Kinds of Everything by Dana for two weeks. And now oh, that really? was the Eurovision Song Contest winner that year. Yes, it would um, have been. I was just going... Yeah. Was that for Ireland? Yeah, I presume so. Um, I, I think it's one of the facts that I ended up skipping. But uh, uh, somewhere somewhere on some of the stuff I've downloaded, it did... I guess, here we go. March the 21st in Amsterdam... Dana wins the 15th right. annual Eurovision Song Contest for Ireland with the song All Kinds of Everything. She is elected to the European Parliament some 29 years later. Well, that's nothing to do with what that has to do with it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say immediately after. Immediately, immediately you yeah. win the Eurovision Song yeah. Contest. Yeah, <laughs> swift. You become an MP, an MP for... I dread to think MP. what Boris Johnson's <laughs> song. If, if he, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, don't, don't. Just um, horrible, horrible <laughs> man. I know, I know you don't like to do politics on this. But only, only, only for sanity's reason. <laughs> Mind you, I mean, you know, the European Parliament, you know, bloody, what's his name, Nigel, and what's it, and what's her face? I mean, it's all, they were just, it just seemed to, we just not, we don't seem to have sent our best yeah. there. So, so at least, at least Ireland yes. sent Dana. They sent somebody sweet yes. and nice yeah. and lovely. And we sent all our <laughs> direct. Yeah. Sorry, Europe. Uh, you're probably well shot, yeah, yeah. quite frankly. I, um, we, we, we don't, depending on when this episode comes out, we we have Nick and I did. Re- oh, we're back. Uh, we're back. No, uh, no, well, it depends how long it takes me to edit it. Obviously, <laughs> uh, <you know. laughs> I don't think we have us now, mate. Um, but yeah, we have got an episode where we just talked about the English entries of the Eurovision Song Contest um, oh. just to sort of see the different sorts it's only it's only when you look at it in that sort of way that you realise quite what mm. different things were tried each year but uh, mm. anyway I'll... I find certain, certainly in recent years uh, setting that aside the interesting thing is we seem to have a pattern of we tend to look at what won last year and try and copy that and, and don't do it as well and that's probably explains a lot for the last 20 years although that Katrina and the Wave song is an absolute storm, yeah, and I love yeah. it. Although that's very old now. <laughs> yes, I know. 23 it's 20, years old. 22 years, isn't it? 23, is it? Okay. But, but, you know, but of of 
the yeah. Eurovision song. That's one of the ones that I genuinely think could have just been a, a hit without Eurovision. Yeah, it's just an astonishing uh, pop there, song. There probably has been one or two other ones I've liked. UK one side, but it will mm. only be one or two um, in, since then. Mm. But um, mm. go on, go on. You wrote the script one, didn't you? <laughs> I know. It's, it has it has the air of one of your scripts. All. Uh, fo- <laughs> well, following Dana, we have um, uh, "Spirit in the Sky" by Norman Greenbaum. Norman Greenbaum. Uh, oh wow! Just for, yeah, for two weeks. No, I can't remember if is his version the original. Was that a cover event? It's very religious, mm. isn't it? It really is incredible. I remember that. Again, it was one of those ones... That I think it used to get played quite a lot on Junior Choice and stuff like that, but I do remember that being played at home. Uh, I mean, my mum and dad were, well, were quite religious in their way, so um, maybe that, that was why it appealed, but I do remember that one. But it's got actually... For, for what effectively is gospel music, it's got a heck of a riff to it. You know, it's a real, real, real catch to it. Uh, and... Um the 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 course the doctor and the medics uh, got got it to number one yes, in eighty six so uh, I think because I think because that was so uh, sort of kitsch that version that that mm. the religious side was almost it was just part of the sort of he could have been saying I'm going to see Santa sort of thing for all it, for all the, yes. the, the 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 lyrics actually meant um, but well sometimes the the lyric itself you know the rhythm of a lyric the it's, it's a bit like poetry I mean you know it's about poetry you know but the rhythm of a line the actual words don't really matter it's the sound of it you know the, the they, they can lose all meaning but the, you know you can find people who are the most anti religious people but they'll still be singing yeah. spirit in the sky at the top of their lungs in in the disco or or on yeah. the dance floor or whatever you want yeah. to call it wherever the young people <laughs> go to gr- to strut their funky stuff but um you know they'll they'll be belting out these lyrics that actually you know in the same way you probably get some christian discos where someone puts a bit of sabbath <laughs> yeah. on you know yeah. well maybe not <laughs> because cliff richard sort of really wasn't having mm quite as big a hit in the early 70s and did religious albums yeah. when he did Devil Woman they're, yes. they're, which is to, yes. to me would just be well it's just a pop song it's got no real meaning it's a, yes. good, it's a, it's a pretty good one mm. of his but, but I think it caused quite mm. a stir amongst his religious sort of if you liked his religious yes. music but uh, um, mm. although you could argue that uh, pointing out somebody has been possessed by the devil is exactly what a lot of religious music <laughs> might <laughs> yeah, benefit yeah. from <laughs> um, Anyway, moving on to our next entry, we have, and I don't think either of us are going to be that excited by this one, I'm afraid, but there will be listeners who who maybe think differently. We have a song called Back Home, and it's the England World Cup Squad 1970. Oh, good. And, and it managed to stay at number one for one, li- one week longer than Spirit in the Sky. But, uh, that is, yeah, I think in many ways that, did that kind of open up the uh, the floodgates of the pop song? Yeah, really? Cause th- I, had there been any before? But did the 1966 I, I squad have a did, song? But, but considering how um, I've gone backwards and forwards on years, I don't remember there mm. being one in in any of the 60s episodes you and I did. No. And um, yeah, mm. it's. But you see, this is the thing, isn't it? This is this is where because uh, I think I, I mean my my footballing knowledge is shall we say almost negligible but i do know that having won the big big fat cup of the world or whatever it's called in 1966 they were expected to go in 1970 to wherever it was played in 1970 and be brilliant again and i think they didn't they get booted out in the first you know game or two games or something they were absolutely dreadful and but of course, they by this time there'd been so much, you know, because they were the holders, the winners, the you know, the, there was so much. Again, I feel that happens a lot with our footballing people. We, we, the people who like footballing, they really, really build up the team as if they can't possibly be beaten, and then every single time they turn out to be a bit rubbish. I may be maybe doing them a terrible injustice on this, but I always get the impression that that the people are going, are, are really get. It's almost like there's a blind faith comes into it like going back to norman greenbaum there a blind faith in that they are going to be brilliant just because they have that shirt on uh, which obviously we we've found over the years that it also involves you know you have to, you have to actually be quite good at kicking the ball around as well not it's not just the shirt you wear but hey. <laughs> 
day, and I'm talking yeah. like a pundit, <laughs> like you're, I know what I'm be, talking. You'll be about. appearing on. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm stroking my chin in a Jimmy Young way. Not Jimmy Young, Jimmy Hill way. Jimmy Young way, but a completely different thing. Um, <laughs> I missed my chin completely. Um, now, our next number one is by, uh, and I don't think it's the author, um, it's uh, um, the band... Ron the, the band, Dahl had the a band is Christie. I, I don't think it's Agatha Christie, and it's Yellow River. Ah, uh, Yellow yeah. river, yellow river, it's in my heart. I'm, in my I'm just yes, double I'm checking right. that they, if they are. I think you're actually going through all my uh, <laughs> my sister's uh, collection now. I keep telling you this. It's, uh, so, suddenly, these these are all terribly familiar. We, they got played till they probably the, the needle came out yes. the other side of the record. I was just looking to see whether they had any other. other um, apparently, um, the the. Guy who is the the front man of Christie is called Jeff Christie, mm. and he was with a band ah. before before this in the sort of 67, 68 mm. called Jeff Christie with the Outer Limits. Um, I, I doubt I don't think it's anything to do with the TV show. See, that's 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 an interesting thing. The the number of bands that are basically a, pe- a person's surname. I mean, obviously you get things like mm. Gillen, you know. Uh, did Ozzy Osbourne have a band? Did he just tour as Ozzy or something? No. I can't remember. Well, the interesting thing, and it, all, the, all the Osbournes. <laughs> no, I don't know. That was a TV. That was a TV show. But um, the, the, what gets me is that you know, if if you, Paul, you know, had at some point decided to front up your own rock and roll combo, you know, and call it mm. Chandler. Do you use your real name on, yes, on the show? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. People know who you are. That's fine. That's good. Just want to make sure. Because I might be I might be letting a cat out of the bag there. Uh, the cat's you know. here. Um, <laughs> so if you if you'd had a band called Chandler and then years later, you know, another person came along and he was also called Chandler, would there be a big oh well you can't call it Chandler because there was a band called Chandler. I mean, there must be a point at which all these names have well, been used. Yeah, I mean obviously when Friends was popular, it annoyed me that Somebody mm. was using it as a first name as well. Oh, of course. That, uh, mm. uh, oh, I mean, just, just think, you could have actually been christened Chandler yeah. Chandler. <laughs> um, yeah. See, I, I find that uh, n- nicely, I mean, it, it, it's a comment I made on, on the um, <coughs> on the lifeboat, on the life, uh, not lifeboat, on the lighthouse episode, but, you know, I feel it's a very nautical name, Chandler, because Chandler is all to do with shipyards. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No, um, I was just double checking that Christie weren't the one hit wonder. They did have a, another top ten hit, right. although it was their only other hit really. Um, San Bernardino in, which, which was the same year and got to number seven. But uh, weirdly, I'm thinking that's either a pizza or a, or a pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it was number one for just the one week. But uh, oh, okay. um, now the next number one is. Mm-hmm. The longest um, to be at that position just by one week. It, uh, it was num- the when was this? Uh, we are now into June, nineteen seventy. June, and right? Okay, because that, that football one was quite early then. Because I always think football's a summer thing. Yeah, 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 that's weird. I thought we were much later in the year, and I thought it was seven weeks. I, get, the I think it, the, the the football <laughs> song was sort of mid May, so I suppose it was yeah. yeah. Until they got booted yeah, yeah. out, um, so. In, in June, we, for seven weeks, we had a, a, a... I'd say this was a pretty famous one. In the Summertime by Mungo Jerry. Ah. Now, I was, I was going to... Yes. I was going to look and see ha, how many other hits... Because I don't think he did have other... Ha, he could, Mungo Jerry, yeah, it was one of those... Again, it's real, really weird, but it's one of those phrases that sort of resonates down the years. You know, even if you don't remember the music or you don't remember the person, for some reason, the actual expression Mungo Jerry really does resonate in some way. I would, I would not say the names because... Um, in, 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 well, let's just say he has a couple of hits in 71 and one of them is, is a, a number one, so I won't say the name. And uh, he had a number three called All Right, All Right, All Right in 1973, but I, I ah, okay. don't recognise that by uh, um, from the from the uh, the title, but he uh, mm. there, were, there were other hits. Weirdly, I, I, I do, but I'm, I'm thinking of something, I'm thinking of Oh Well Yeah. Oddly that's that, it's, that's taken me to Oh Well which is completely different, but that's where it's taken But, yeah, um, it's sort of... in the summertime, which 
because there are there are a fair few songs called in the summertime. So it's so it's actually his. It's another one where where probably when I first heard this song, I probably thought that Mungo Jerry was his was his name, but uh, Ray Dawson mm. is the name of the ah. the, um, the the, the mm-hmm. Dors- Dorset. Um, okay. Let me just see. In the summertime, it was the debut single as well. Um, mm. Written and composed by Ray Dorset. Yeah, well, there we go. Now the um, the the next number one, although it was only number one for six weeks, it uh, is flagged up on this site as being the best-selling single of the year, and mm. um, it's one you, it's one you you recognise. But I I I, I, I don't know that it's my favourite by him by any means. It is The Wonder of You by Elvis Presley. Oh, right. That's the wonder. It's, it's, the it, wonder of you. It, it, I never heard of it. Never heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess we're into the, uh, the the leather jumpsuit era of... Uh, oh, or the, le- the, the biker look, whatever you want to call it, of, of, of Presley. Has he, gone to, has he gone to Vegas yet? It feels like he must have done, but he must have been very hot. <laughs> Well, there must have been still... Uh, was he still making movies in some I think, from my research I've done for the Chatterbox shows, mm. I think 69, I think there might have been one in 70 that was like mm. a, a live performance type, so mm. not a proper film film. So he's pretty much out of the other end of the films mm. by now. It might be a tie-in with the movie then. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, for people to suddenly re-emerge, they're either, they've either basically... No, not, not put, put too fine a point in it. They've either just died, mm-hmm. or, or or they've got some other project that's high profile. You know, the, it's, yeah. the weird thing um, is that, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't. Well, it, it, even though his version is the famous version, mm. um, it was originally recorded by somebody called Vince Edwards in 1958. Mm-hmm. Although this recording has never been released so it doesn't really count if it's not being released uh, well I mean Delvis was never unpopular was yeah, it it was yeah. just it was just not you know the kids had moved on you know, yeah so. but, um, yeah it's, it says um, The Wonder of You was recorded in Las Vegas Nevada in February 1970 oh, okay. uh, um, so yes our next now this is surprising um this next number one was only number one for one week, but mm-hmm. I would, I would put it, it mark it down as one of my favourites of this year. Okay, um, it is the Tears of a Clown by Sp- oh. Spooky Robinson and the Miracles. So, wow! Um, but, uh, yeah. I, again, covered in the eighties, was it? Was it selected? Did it? Oh. Um, somebody like that. Yeah. Tears of a Clown. I remember a more reggae version of it. That's yeah. The but uh, yes, no, yes, absolutely, it's smoky. Oh, it's the beat, the beat in nineteen seventy nine. The beat. Right. Yeah, they they got to number. <laughs> I have I have vague knowledge, but no, but nothing accurate. So they got to number six. <laughs> they got to number six, uh, and uh, yeah, lots of people have covered it. Obviously, um, hmm. Petula Clark recorded it in seventy one. Oh, right. Flying Pickets did a version in eighty four. Um, Phil Collins recorded it as a B-side in 2003. Never, never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, ah, the and, and even, wor- and even worse, and even worse, Irish boy band Boyzone covered uh, it on their Motown tribute album. They're luckily so off my radar, I wouldn't yeah. really care. <laughs> one, although one thing I, um, that, that I will mention because I like them is the song is mentioned in Roxette's song Spe- Spending My Time from the 1991 album Joyride. There that, we go. Uh, that's allowed. That's that. That's uh, referencing. Oh, well, absolutely. <laughs> um, now, we've got four number ones left in the UK. Okay. We have, for six weeks, we have Band of Gold by Frida Payne, which... Oh, right, um, okay. I... I I, I think I like that one. Although I, I remember being introduced to that in the sort of nineties, like Would early nineties. Was that have been used as the theme tune to the Linda? Was it Linda Laplante series? Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, I don't God. think I watched this. I don't actually know what the oh, idea okay. would make sense. Mm. Um, was it? I'm not even sure it was a Linda Laplante, but it was. There was a definitely a a TV show called Band yeah, of Gold. Yeah, that's right. Um, 
and I imagine that you know there, there was a phase actually where every single TV show had to have the name of a pop song. Yeah. You know, and so, so I kind of imagine that that was if, if it were if if the series was called Band of Gold, there was a fair old chance that's what they used. Yes, fair or chance. some version of it. Or some version, yes. Probably done by Anita Dobson, yes. <laughs> uh, Sorry. It's been covered by Celine Dion. I think we should just stop there. Ah, <laughs> well, maybe, that's, maybe that's the version they used. No, nah, I don't think it was, but just the, the idea of, of... Anyway. Um, so next, for three weeks... Me art will go on. Me art will go on. Now, now Band of Gold was... In French. Well, but, but Band of Gold was number one for six weeks, and, right. I mean, it's, it's a good song, but... Poor Tears it's, of a Clown. It became a bit of a late night, not nightclub classic, really, didn't it? Band of Gold. It, mm. it, you always feel like before karaoke, it was just the dancing around the handbags, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all singing the lyrics as it was on on the on the old Duke box. But um, yeah, I still feel sorry for Tears of a Clown. I think that should have been number one for should have shed forever. Well, actually, Wonder of You should only be number one for one week, and Tears of a Clown mm. could have been six. And that, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go back and change it. Wonder of You, the one week. The quirks of history. Tears of a Clown will now be six weeks. And Band of Gold, that doesn't affect Band of Gold. Yeah, but uh, yeah. there'll be some Elvis fans out there protesting. You're messing with the timeline. Oh. We'll, 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 be, we'll, we'll be getting angry letters. And let me say to, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, re, re angry letters. Better than no letters at all. <laughs> there we go. Have you ever had an angry letter to your podcast? No. <laughs> only, only, only from a fictional I'll chat. get me pen out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, but, um, anyway, our next... You should at least get one. Sorry. <laughs> our next number one is number one for three weeks. And it's okay. um, uh, Woodstock by Matthew Southern Comfort. Okay. I, I don't even know if that's a song or whether that's a That's one of those ones that's going to be a massively familiar song when you hear it. and But I just can't yeah. think at all what it might sound like. It's one of those weird things. Apparently, uh, this version... Um, it, it's got a bit of a history. Um, no, right. This is like the third record, at least, at least the third recording. The it's, okay. it's actually a song because I thought I, th- I, I. Has it got anything to do with the little yellow bird? No, I think it's to do with the concert. Although that could be All to right. do with that. I, but actually, it was originally Snoopy written, versus the Red Baron. <laughs> this is the sequel to it. <laughs> it. It's it was originally written. Well, it is written by Jody Mitchell, and mm. it appears on her album Lady of the Ca- Ladies yeah, okay. of the Canyon from 1970. Mm. So same year. So it's to have been recorded three times in the same year. Um, it, it was originally the B-side of her single Big Yellow Taxi okay. and then the second release that year came from Crosby, Stills and Nash and Young um, and that was uh, that's the version mm-hmm. that's best known in the States and then this version by Matthew's Southern mm-hmm. Comfort is they're a British band and mm-hmm. it's the most fa- it's the famous ver- it's the version that's known over here not that I can mm-hmm. place it myself but uh, well, no, I mean, I've even I've just pulled up the lyrics and I'm still none the wiser. We are stardust, we are golden, we are billion-year-old carbon and we've got to get ourselves back to the garden. Mm. And I couldn't tell you what the t- tune to that was at all. So, yeah. uh, I shall be having to listen when we edit it. Indeed. Um, I wonder if Matthew Southern Comfort had any other hits. Let's just have a look. <laughs> uh, yeah. Matthew's Jameson Scotch. <laughs> uh, uh, Matthew's vodka tonic. <laughs> they certainly released other things, but they didn't uh, don't appear to have mm. either that or the, or the Wikipedia page isn't making. Um, yeah, isn't. Uh, we cannot find a link. <laughs> uh, yes, there's quite a lengthy story be- behind it, which we haven't got time for today. But, <laughs> That's uh, all we got time for this week, Battle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're now on to our penultimate. Um, uh, this must have this must what have come month, out. What month are we in now? The, so into November for one week, and the uh, the song is "Voodoo Child" by wow. Jimi Hendrix or the Jimi Hendrix Experience, and by which point he had had been um, mm. gone for a couple of months. So, so now that you see that that does fascinate me actually because I, I mean I was never when when I was at school you know people people talked about. Jimi Hendrix and I had not a clue who he was I mean I, obviously you know, late, later years I discovered and everything like that but I would never have thought of him although I know he did things like the Lulu show so, mm, you know, yeah. but I, 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 I 
never really thought of him as that mainstream. So I, I kind of thought, yeah, I can understand. I just, I'm, I'm surprised that they actually had a, you know, a hit parade kind yeah, of number I one. I feel like we had, might have had one last year as well, but uh, mm. yeah, I know what you mean. Um, it, it just, I don't associate him with the charts, shall we say? Let's yeah. put it that way. You know, yeah. it's, um, so I'm just trying to see. Um, yeah, cause it had a. I wonder if this was an old song, but at that point, mm. an old song being re-released because he died because they hadn't done an album since '68, mm. and then there was an mm. album that came out in '70. That's a live album, and yeah. and uh, and it. So I don't know. Let me yeah. have a quick explore. See, there's a whole there's a whole episode to be recorded, Paul, on the posthumous number one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, the thing is. I think this might, it might be there might be a, a typo because I thought it was mm. called. It's actually called Voodoo. I, I don't know how you pronounce that. Chili um, it, child. It, it's it, yeah. It, it says it's phonetic, a, 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 a phonetic approximation of child without the D. Oh, mm. I see. It was it was mm. um, the, the yeah. The, it was slightly retitled in the UK because I thought it was child, um, mm. but uh, and, and and it's. And some Wikipedia pages it's referred to as child, and some it's mm. as child. Okay. Well, we're still a few years away from Slade and all their messing around with yes. spell things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that where Prince got the idea from? <laughs> he was Prince, a big Slade fan. Probably could well have been. Who knows? <laughs> there uh, you go. You see, yeah. um, you know, Noddy Holder was a massive influence on, yeah. on Prince. Yeah. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> it's all the shiny hats. <laughs> um, now, our last, our last number one of 1970 is um, Dave, Dave Edmonds' I Hear You Knocking for six oh, weeks. So. I hear you knocking. But, uh, See, that, so that's basically... Uh, that, that, so that's what was in the chart at number one at, at the end of the year when the Beatles finally said, right, yeah. call it a day. Yeah. We can't compete we with hear, it. We, we, hear can't com- what, yeah. we hear 1971 knocking <laughs> 50 years ago, Paul. Yeah. And... Yeah. <laughs> And we're not letting it in. That's what we should do with several of the years we've had recently. Yeah. Just say, no, no, sorry, no, not. Let. We're gonna we're gonna stay at New Year for two years. We're gonna have a two year party, yeah. New Year's Eve, and not let anybody in. We're not having this New Year. We don't like it. We don't want it. We just think it's not what we want. Thank you very much. It's all very nice of you to offer, but we don't want it. Uh, now, apparently, it doesn't say that the song. It says the lyrics. There were quite a lot of lyrics. Going back as far as nineteen twenty eight, going back as far as nineteen twenty eight, that referred to like uh, I keep you knocking, but you can't come in, and all that sort of thing. Trapped. But I think the th- that it may have not have been quite the same tune. So um, yeah, it it's, it looks quite involved. I don't know if I can, mm. but um, it it was certainly had been in the charts in nineteen fifty five in a different version. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, and uh, Dave Edmonds was. Um, he does sound like a plumber, doesn't he? Yeah. With Dave Edmonds, <laughs> He's, or a, or a car mechanic. If it, yeah, and, and uh, that's that's not to denigrate either. They are both noble professions and probably make a great deal more money than I ever did. But um, well, Martin, it, 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 um, you'll be pleased to know we've got Dave Edmonds here on the line. Ah, Dave, were you a pl- were you ever a plumber, sir? <laughs> Oh, I was. Oh, no, that's not, oh. the, not the right accent. He's Welsh. Um, <laughs> well, he was uh, a plumber. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. Oh, God, no. Let's not do that. <laughs> he's 76, so the chances of him listening to this... Oh, well, there you go. Who knows? Oh. He might have time on his hands. He uh, might Google himself and... Yeah. and, and <laughs> if, you oh, put it, if you put it on the codes, you know. <laughs> anyway. Fair enough. Um, so he's still, he's still around. 76, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I can say it's just one of those... I, I know, again, it's not to, not to denigrate at all, but it, it, you know how pop stars throughout the 70s had such glamorous... Mm. Or, you know, they would change their name to be glamorous and sort of, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of one that isn't that glittery bloke, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And um, and yet here you are with this... with this pff, Dave Edmonds, mate. Dave <laughs> Edmonds. That's, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Thank you very much. I am a pop star, and I will continue to be a pop star, even though I don't have a pop star. You know, he has he has a connection with. Um, he he ended up uh, well, he 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 did uh, collaborations with Nick Lowe, and they formed the band oh, right. Rockpile. Um, so I sort of that sort of brings you more to the late sort of 
70s yeah. with the sort of new wave with Nick Lowe and things like that. Um, so, yeah, it looks like he started off, he, he sort of, uh, the stuff he did evolved to perhaps being more original as, as time went on. But uh, um, but actually, he did ha- he he had had a top five hit in 68, but it's called The Sabre Dance by Love Sculpture. Love Sculpture yeah. doesn't sound like a 60s band name. It sounds more like an 80s new romantic um, <laughs> name. Um, but he does have other hits. He got a number eight hit, Baby I Love You, in 73. Mm. Uh, Born to Be With You, number five. Um, also 73. Girls Talk. I forget that he did that. Girls Talk mm. uh, in 79. Um, Queen of Hearts, 79, number 11. Mm. So he did have... He did have other hits, um, but uh, yeah. Well, now we ought to just have a look at some of the other hits this year. Mm. Um, and so I'm just making sure I don't need this page anymore. I might come back to that in a minute. Um, mm-hmm. So yes, uh, other top ten singles that we might have heard of in '70. Marmalade was still around. Re- Reflections mm. of My Life, number three. Um, Come and Get It by Badfinger, number four. Th- now, I remember being quite interested in that song. I, I've never sort of owned the greatest hits of Badfinger, although they did do one no. or two hits that became big for other people. Uh, without you um, being um, one, one of those. Um, yeah. But um, I remember hearing... I'm, I'm sure on some documentary of the Beatles there is a and it might be even on one of their anthology albums they yeah. did record a version of Come and Get It um, oh, right. and, okay. and I remember being sort of sort, sort of a bit fascinated it's a bit like you know I, I love ABBA but I also yeah. I'm, I'm interested in the stuff they were, were recording when they were sort of are we going to do another because they did quite a few songs they didn't finish that could have been um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure there were, ver- there were snatches of some of the songs that went to chess with, with, right. um, with uh, more, Ab- more, more ABBA versions. And the same with the Beatles. I'm, I'm interested oh, yeah. in those things that are sort of fall off, fell off the end into the solo albums oh, or yeah. for other well, people. Chess is is quite, uh, I mean, quite a musical. Uh, you know, as, as a as an as an album, as an LP, uh, chess is. Uh, I, I I love chess. It's, it's a very very good piece of work. Um, we also have uh, number two, Leaving on a Jet Plane by Peter, Paul and Mary. Um, and we also have, I, I think... Leaving on a Jet Plane, don't know if I'll be... And that's, again, it's interesting because that, you know, whole thing of the 70s. Uh, I do, I, we felt like it was the jet age. Mm-hmm. That was the interesting thing, the jet age. You know, uh, and so, so there's a lot of stuff about aeroplanes in the popular culture. Uh, and the, the the funny thing about that, of course, is that it's uh, a John Denver song. Although I, mm. I don't know if oh. mm. I don't know if if it was released, or whether he re- I know he released it on an album, but I don't know if he released it as a single. Um, mm. um, so it's, but, or whether it was their version that was the sort of mm. at the time um, mm. more more well known. Famously died in an air crash. Yes. Um. yes. Uh, for I've been to the site, mm. uh, Monterey, where, where mm. that, very, that very thing happened. Mm. The, um, another weird thing around the same same time is is uh, that Jethro Tull, who were far more known for albums, I think, mm. were actually in the early part of their career were having quite big hits. Their mm. their, their song "The Witch's Promise" got to number four in wow. nineteen seventy. Um, it's f- I, I had a friend who was very keen on Jeff Hotel and, and mm. I did actually buy some of their albums. Although, the, of course, typically me, the so- one of the songs that I, I love the most is one of probably their least... Because um, I think they were more rocky for their mm. uh, first couple of albums or, or more... I don't know quite... I mean, I guess they're always a bit rocky, but a different sort mm. of rocky. And um, okay. there's a song, I think it's called Sweet Dream... Um, by them, which yeah. was, which was a top ten hit in '69, and, and uh, it wasn't even on an album, I don't think. And, no. and that, that's that's the song that clicked with me most of all the songs I heard of theirs, <laughs> like the most <laughs> unrepresentative song of their of their career. Mm. But uh, there we go. Um, and and it looks like uh, the Witch's Promise was also a non-album single. So, mm. um, 
but I think there are there are those situations with bands when they yeah. they start where they're not quite sure which direction. They're, 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 going back to ABBA, there's definitely there's an ABBA album around the time of Waterloo where th- mm. you can see that they're they're not quite sure if they're going to be a bubblegum pop band or whether they're going mm. to be a, a, a rock band. Mm. Um, and there are one or two songs where the Benny and Bjorn are singing and the girls are more backing singers and mm. and in the end they went off in a different route but uh, it's well, quite you interesting make your, the thing is once you make your breakthrough once you've resonated with the public yeah. Yeah, the, pub, the public are a, a, a very conservative lot you know, in a small C but no, you know, but they, they do they do like to get more of the same yes. quite, quite often yeah. um, what else have we got have we got an early hit by Chicago called Iron okay. Man number 8 uh, I it's the same Chicago. Um, it's a, I must admit, yeah. that, that, that's, uh, that's a long career that yeah. I hadn't expected. Yeah, they started in 67, which I wasn't mm. aware of. Um, oh, in fact, they were originally known as the Chicago Transit Authority, and they shortened their name in 69. <laughs> <So, laughs> then, of course, there's a lot of bands. Yeah. There's a lot of bands like Aerosmith and Kiss, mm. although I don't think we've quite reached their era. They're more mm. sort of... Well, I know Kiss is more like 71, 72, mm. but, the, the, you know, the, and um, Hart, people like that who had hits mm. in the 80s in the UK who who were massive in the States. Mm. Um, you either get that, that one word band name, though, don't you? Or, mm. or, or the one that's like a small essay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, there doesn't seem to be middle ground in that era because so, I, th- I think, again, there was kind of the ir- irony of. I don't know, going against the trend of having short, snappy names at one point. So, see why you get Backman Turner overdrive. Or you've got Co- Cosby, Still, Snash, and Young. Yeah, and all that, that lot, we came across. Mm. Um, it's also another top ten hit by Mary Hopkin called mm. Tema, Tema Harbour, which okay. I can pretty much guarantee I've never heard, but maybe I, I will find I have. But uh, um, you've got Canned Heat, number two, with Let's Work yes. Together. Um, and, and a favourite of mine. Um, and, and I think I've spoke to, spoken about them before mm. as far as I explored them and enjoyed a lot of more of their... They, they're known for one song, but I explored their albums and like a lot of their okay. stuff. Uh, Venus by Shocking Blue, okay. um, and um, who were massive in Europe, mm. um, or in mainland Europe, and had lots of other hits. Um, mm. And they're definitely, if you can... Is that uh, the or, Venus we know, the Nana Nunu? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's right, yeah. Right. Um, but it... it I, I think I can't remember what it was that I, I guess I was aware of the, the 1970 version and I, yes. I quite liked it and but I think I read an article and then, the, and then thought this was before the days of Spotify mm-hmm. now it'd be very easy to mm-hmm. dip onto Spotify and just listen to a mm-hmm. compilation I'm sure they have in the same way as they do when I was exploring the Archies I'm sure there must be a shocking blue mm-hmm. um, um, it was a bit playlist. like that with uh, you know when Wheels on Fire was used for Absolutely Fabulous it's kind of like yeah. finding out that it's also an old pop song from Way yeah, when, there's, there's a bird's version of that somewhere. Yeah. Is there actually yeah. a, a way you can just, how can I put it, with, with Spotify, you can put the same, so, you can actually get all the different versions of the same yeah, song? I'm not sure. As a possibly, playlist. But I guess poss- possibly. Mm. Or, or if not, you can find them and then make them into your mm. own little playlist, perhaps. Mm. Um, so you could just I'm have an gonna... afternoon of, of, yeah. <laughs> of different versions of Venus. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, uh, they got to. They got to number eight with right. with their version, uh, so the Banana Rama version is is the bigger hit, yeah. um, uh, as such. But uh, uh, we also have "I Want You Back" by the Jackson Five, number two, um, "Instant Karma" by John Lennon, number uh-huh. five, "United We Stand" by Brotherhood of Man, number yeah. ten. Oh, that's uh, surprising. I, I didn't realise they'd been around that early, but there you go. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure whether it's sli- they were slightly different at the start, or there was more of them, or slightly different lineup. Mm-hmm. But uh, I might be wrong. Um, um, we've got uh, "Years May Come, Years May Go" by Her- Herman's Hermits. Mm-hmm. Which I, I uh, um, ah, here we go. I said that the Beatles must have had some sort of hits in '70, yeah. and uh, yeah. Let it be only hit number two. So, mm. uh, you got that that same old feeling by Pickety Witch. I wow. love that name. Wow, Pickety Witch. <laughs> it's, mm. it's, uh, I don't know anything about Pickety Witch, but I want to because the name's so good. <laughs> um, 
Actually, maybe I should do because it's a, the I do like my female fronted bands and uh, the no, singing is Polly I Brown. Seek out Pickety Witch. Yes, Witch they, are, yes. they, they are worth your time, I'm sure. And the other Number thing five. is, it makes me think of a slightly radical witch refusing to cross the witch picket line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't stop and look why. What I'm going to do very briefly. Why is it called Pickety Witch? Um, the, uh, uh, the name Pickety Witch is often said to have been taken from a Cornish village that, um, through which their eventual lead singer Polly Brown had passed with her sister. In fact, there is no such village, though there was a pub of that name in Yeovil and Somerset. Sounds all very, all very uncertain. But, uh, well, they only really did um, one album, so mm. I don't think there'll be lots of, there won't be that much to explore. That'll be just an afternoon's work. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, they they did have more than they did. Uh, they did do. It's a sad old kind of movie, uh, and baby, I won't let you down. Uh, oh, that's weird. Uh, oh, strange. Um, they had a single in Canada that got to number eighty three, mm. which is called Waldo P. Emerson Jones. Oh, right. Now that is also well. I guess it's the same song. That is actually an Archie song. Ah, it's actually dun, 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 it, dun. so. Yeah, it all comes together. <laughs> everything, everything in the end, everything is connected. You, you can't get away from the fact. It's, it's just it's, one, uh, of, one of those things of life. Whole, <laughs> everything everything is connected, and you can't. You can't seven, escape it. seven steps for, of of uh, Archie's rather than seven steps of of Kevin Bacon. Um, you might never no, have thought that, though, would you? You'd never have thought yeah. that. Yeah, just right. when you set out on the Archie's journey, <laughs> um, the Pity the Witch connection. Um, uh, what else have we got? We've got Andy Williams can't help falling in love. Mm. We've got Raindrops keep falling on my head by Sasha Distel. Number ten that will be a cover though, won't it? Um, probably. Isn't that that's a but that's a backrack? A but backrack. Yeah. How David's. Yeah. Um, it was only written in '69, though, for Butch Cassidy mm. and the Sundance Kid. So mm. um, I have a feeling it was a, a hit that version as well. I would say so, possibly something to do with Saturday Night Television. Yeah, I um, was Presley had another top ten hit, uh, mm. "Don't Cry, Daddy." Nah. Uh, there's also um, a version of "Na Na Hey Hey Kiss Him Goodbye" that <laughs> Nana Rama later covered. <laughs> Um, the rich territory that, for the Nana Nini Nunu, nineteen seventy. Yes, yeah. St- uh, st- that was by a band called Steam. They were an American pop rock mm-hmm. band um, that got to number nine. Um, you got Young, Young, Gifted, and Black by Bob and Marcia, number mm-hmm. five. Knock Knock, Who's There? Mary Hopkins, number two. I think that's quite a well-known one. Oh yes, yeah, that's knock, that. knock, knock, Who's There? Could <laughs> it be a love that's calling? <laughs> If, if, if we sing the same notes, we could do a duet. <laughs> <laughs> I They're think not you're necessarily the right think, notes. <laughs> yeah, just, just in the wrong order. Um, what else? We've got Kenny Rogers and the first edition, huh? Something's Burning. Um, we've got Gimme Dat Ding by the Pipkins. Gimme Dat, Gimme Dat, Gimme Gimme Dat, Gimme Dat, Gimme Dat, Gimme Gimme Dat, Gimme Dat, Gimme Dat, Gimme Gimme Dat, Ding. We've got Wind Farewell is a Lonely Sound. Oh, right. I can't. I can't help myself. Sugar pie. Oh, sugar pie. Honey bunch by the Four Tops. Wow. Um, I think that, three tops and another top. I think. I think sugar pie honey bunch is probably the better known name of that song. Oh, okay. Almost. Um, we've got Never Had a Dream Come True by ah. Stevie Wonder, number six. Um, House of the Rising Sun by Frigid Pink, mm. number four. Interesting. When. When Julie comes around by the cufflinks, <laughs> I have a feeling the cufflinks. Oh yes, the cufflinks are the band that the guy who does the vocals for the Archies was in. Oh. Um, uh, Ron Dante. Uh, he 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 is the singer in the cufflinks as well as being the singer in the Archies. Okay. So I didn't realise that the cufflinks had a hit over here. I'll have to play these while I'm editing. It's going to well, take absolutely. a year to edit this episode. Um, we've got a... Uh, oh, this is a... a well, it's a whole one. new decade of music to explore. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, we've got a Tom Jones hit mm. at number five. It's called... 
daughter of darkness. Daughter yes, of yes. darkness. Yes. Sounds like Devil Woman about five years early. Yeah, absolutely. Tom Jones. No, I must admit that that one doesn't ring any uh, any bell. No, no. Daughter I, of darkness. I feel that was when he was going through his druid phase. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Maybe he was uh, doing some. Uh, I don't know. Joints I, I do, covered. I do. Yeah, I do know. <laughs> I do know a horror film called Daughter of Darkness, or something, ah. or, or pretty much that. Uh, no, maybe it's the maybe it's the theme tune. No, okay. Yeah. Um, we also got Traveling Band by Credence Clearwater Revival. Oh right, yes. Um, oh, oh um, one of my fa- and one of my favourite Holly songs. I can't tell the bottom from the top. <laughs> uh, number number seven, uh, and Question by the Moody Blues. Number two. It's interesting to see some of these that were nearly number one. Yes, well, um, I mean, there's a whole history of songs that were better than the ones that were number one at yeah, the time, isn't yeah. there? Got um, The Move, uh, Brontosaurus, number wow. seven, um, and um, a, a family favourite of, of the Chandlers, uh, I Don't Believe in If Anymore by Roger Whittaker, number eight. Uh, now you say, I uh, just have visions of you all standing around the old pianola at Chandler Towers <laughs> and uh, having a big old, big old family sing along. <laughs> And, and I'm doing. I'm doing. I, they pause to let me do the whistling bits. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, we've got "Honey Come Back" by Glenn Campbell, number four. "Up the Ladder to the Roof" by The Supremes, number six. That doesn't sound uh, a promising title, does it? You know. No, "Up the Ladder to the Roof." That's not the way to start the uh, the, the the new solo. Well, the 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 the, the independent Supremes. I'm um, sure it's a great song. I just I, yeah. As a title, you just think hey. <laughs> yeah. Um, Everything is Beautiful by Ray Stevens. Number uh, six. In its own way. Yeah, and Grooving with Mr. Blow. I don't know if ah. that's how you pronounce it. Number two. Oh, that, right. th- th- who on earth is Mr. Blow? It's the... Ne- oh. What? What's the name? Oh, it's a sort of... A, a sort of name... Mr. Blow was the name given to the musicians who performed the single Grooving with Mr. Blow, nah. which was a hit in 1970 in the UK for Dick James Music. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, God, I have to, uh, apparently it, it, they played the wrong... BBC Radio in the UK mm. unwittingly played the wrong side of the single. Oh. Uh, but, uh, anyway. D- did, it um, have a, did it have a rude B-side? I <laughs> don't know. Um, we've got ABC by the Jackson 5, mm. number 8. We've got... Um, Cotton Fields by the Beach Boys, number five. Wow. All Right Now by Free, number two. Wow. That's definitely um, one that uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't have even have necessarily realised it was 70. Uh, mm. um, I thought we might have still had that one to come. Uh, the, uh, Fleetwood Mac had a top ten, but it's obviously the the earlier incarnation. Mm. The Green... Ma- the Green green Manalishi with the two-pronged yes. crown. crown. Yes. Covered by have Judas you... Priest. Wow. Uh-huh. Um, oh, and also, actually, one of my favourite early 70s Cliff Richard songs, um, Goodbye Sam, Hello Samantha. <laughs> but, uh, I love that one, it's just so kitsch. Yes. Um, it, it's interesting, uh, actually, uh, Chris, uh, Chris, Cliff Richard singing songs about sex changes. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's, that's just uh, I do like uh, the lyric of that one. Um, number six, um, we've got Abraham, Martin, and John by Marvin Gaye, number, mm-hmm. na- number nine. Uh, it's all in the game. Before tops, number five. Up around the bend by Credence Clearwater Revival, number three. Uh, um, CCR. I also love for the common people by Nikki Thomas, number nine. I presume that's the same song that Paul Young had a hit with in the eighties. Yes, it will be. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and um, uh, uh, we've got uh, something by which would be the Beatles song yeah. something. Um, Sorry, no way, she... <laughs> but it's yes, Shirley Bassey's version, <laughs> number four. Uh, uh, more more lip rolling then. Uh, uh, we've got uh, Neanderthal. We've got Neanderthal Man by Hot Legs, number two. Right, okay. Um, so I shouldn't be reading so many of these, but I keep seeing. I think, oh, I must have mention this one. No, um, Marmalade it's, it's, had another hit, num- uh, Rainbow, oh, number three. It's just an awful lot of music. In the, again, it, a whole new decade. It really, I do. I do think that sometimes the change in the decade does actually trigger an awful lot of you know change, gen, mm. genuinely in society. You know, oh, but also, it's also interesting to see the ones that were big hits that you don't recognise mm. at, at least from the titles. Things like that, that fall up, through up the, the cracks up, of up history. 
Um, oh, one of my favourite um, of this era, uh, Make It With You by Bread. I mean, I, I, I like Bread as a band. Um, mm, right. Making sure Bread, favorite. Bread just generally, <laughs> yes. nice thing. Uh, bread is good. Yeah. Um, uh, Wild World by Jimmy Cliff, number eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 an Early Hot Chocolate, Love Is Life, number six. Um, now, Which Way You Going, Billy, by The Poppy Family, number seven. Uh, it's amazing what people write songs about, isn't it? When all sudden does it, it really does surprise you sometimes. Wait, which way are you going, Billy? Oh, there's a lyric. <laughs> oh, um, we've got... Um, Got Black Knight by Deep Purple, number two, mm. and Paranoid by Black Sabbath, mm. um, number four. Talking. Uh, we've got They Long to Be Close to You by The Carpenters, number six. Now and you're eight, talking. <laughs> that's a double ne- bill. <laughs> Black Sabbath and, eight, and The Carpenters. Yeah, yes. That. That, 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 yeah, that's one entry, yeah. Ain't No Mountain High Enough by Diana Ross, number six. Um, Ball, of Conf- Ball of Confusion by The Temptations. Ball of Confusion. Ball right. of Confusion, yes. Okay. Uh, the Witch by The Rattles. I have a feeling I've seen that song like mm. on a, a top, like it's on one of those Top of the Pops from 1970 that exists or something. Uh, oh, Ruby Tuesday by Melanie. Ah, uh, um, the Rolling Stones, of course. We've got, um, yes, we've got uh, Indian, Re- Indian Reservation, The Lament of the Cherokee Reservation Indian by D- John by Don Farnden, got to number three. That uh, rings a bell, actually, weirdly. Oh, Crackling Rosie by Neil Diamond, number three. Yeah. Um, Rider White Swan by T Rex, number mm. two. That's a, one of my favourite T Rexes. Mm. Uh, you got me dangling on a string by Chairman of the Board, number five. And When I'm Dead and Gone by McGuinness Flint, number two. Right. Very, Moving very, on. very briefly, we'll hop over to. We're leaving on a jet plane. Don't <laughs> know when I'll be um, back again. Have I got the right. Oh, no, that's list of UK top ten. Oh, no, that's albums. Oh, well, but sorry. Um, before before we go over to America, um, I've got a few albums that were big, but we won't we won't stop for long mm. on them. Um, you've got oh, bands like uh, we got obviously got uh, Simon Garfunkel. We've got mm. Johnny Cash. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash from Memphis to Vegas. From Vegas to Memphis by Elvis Presley. Um, Willie and the Poor Boys by Credence Clearwater Revival. Ah. Um, Sentimental Journey by Ringo Starr. These are all top okay. ten albums. Of course, McCartney by McCartney. Mm-hmm. Um, Getting to This by Bloodwind Pig. And Cricklewood Green, <laughs> right, by okay. ten year, Cricklewood, Cricklewood Green by Ten Years After. And Benefit by Ooh. Jethro Tull. Do the Cricklewood uh, Shakedown. Yes. Um, you've got... Greatest Hits by Herb Alpair and the Tijuana Brass. Uh, yes. We've got uh, Deep Purple in Rock by Deep Purple. Five Bridges by The Nice. Uh, Self Portrait by Bob Dylan. Um, we've got uh, Shirley Bassey named an album after something. Um, oh, uh, we've also um, got Get Your Yaya's Out, The Rolling Stones in Concert. Um, Paranoid by Black Sabbath Led Zeppelin 3 New Morning by Bob Dylan that's two albums by him this year wow. but it's pretty much standard for certainly for the 60s I yeah. guess yeah. and to be fair I mean Bob you know there, there, there wasn't much overproduction on a Bob Dylan album to be fair mm-hmm. I mean it's, it, the, the work was the writing you know yes yeah. right we will hop on the plane and head over and see what the number ones were in the US um so, well, that's weird. <laughs> I will say that, but because um, we had we had raindrops keep falling on my head by mm. Sasha Distel, um, but their first number one in 1970 was the B.J. Thomas version from was it Butch and Sundance, wasn't it? Yes, Just in yeah. um, but but they had the original from Butch Cassidy mm. by B.J. Thomas. So yeah. <laughs> um, Goodness knows how Sasha became involved. But, uh, uh, just like the song. I mean, the thing is, people just used to record, you know, the songwriters used to sell their songs. Yeah. yeah. Them, so, yeah. We, we do actually have quite a different um, lineup uh, mm. for, for number ones. It's quite interesting. Um, the next number one was the Jackson 5, I Want mm. You Back. 
And then my old favourite, Venus, by Shocking Blue, was number uh-huh. one in the States uh, just mm. for a week. But uh, then we have uh, Sly and the Family Stone, Thank You. Uh-huh. Um, Bit of funk. Yeah. And then we have Simon and Garfunkel, called Bridge Over Trouble mm. Water. And then Let It Be uh, was number one for two weeks uh. by the Beatles. So they did have... That they did. In fact, they have more than one number one in 1970 okay. in the states. Bit, uh, bit of Beatles lag over yeah, in America. You see. Well, except that they did better. Mm. Uh, no, well, I just mean you know that, that, that it's kind of like they hadn't perhaps noticed that they'd split up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and the fandom was, was still buying everything. You know. Yeah. Um, then we have the Jackson Five with ABC for two weeks. No, for, yes, for two weeks. Um, then we have the Guess Who. With American Woman, no, ah, okay. I, I think, I think I know the, yeah, a cover version of that by American Woman. Yeah. Um, can't think who it is now. As uh, opposed to as opposed to the um, top Tom Petty American Girl, which was used all over the place later on. Yeah, right, so. yeah I think. Uh, oh, I'm just trying to think. Somebody shouty. Yeah. I remember it being a very shouty. Song. Yeah, I think it was. Oh, I can think his name's on the tip of my tongue. Um, Lenny Kravitz. I feel like Lenny ah. Kravitz did American Woman for some, for something. Um, <coughs> now I'm going to have to check. Uh, yes, it was from his greatest hits album. I think it's a standard thing, isn't it? To uh, you need to do a greatest hits just do a quick cover. So. <laughs> um, Fill up the numbers. Yeah. Um, then we have Ray Stevens. Everything is beautiful for three weeks. Uh, the Beatles have another number one. Um, with the long and winding road, yeah. um, although it was a double A side with for you blue, which isn't that that yeah, Defin- definitely feels like an epitaph. The long and winding road, yeah. Right. Yeah. we're off. Um, then, although we we didn't officially know that as, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we have the the Jackson Five again with the love you say for number two. Mm. Three Dog Night with Mama Told Me Not to Come. Um, now wow. I think that's the thing that's, that's a, song. a Tom Jones colour, the, isn't it? Later, the Stereophonics had a hit with yeah. it. Um, with with most of these, with Tom just, Jones. Yeah. Uh, so. Other than Bridge Over Troubled Waters, all most mm. of these are just two or three weeks. Um, wow. Then we have the Carpenters. They long to be close to you for four mm. weeks. Um, uh, Bread, make it with you for one mm. week. Edwin Starr, War, three weeks. What is it good for? I'm not sure. Absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> Say it then, again. <laughs> Diana Ross, Ain't No Matter High Enough for three weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Neil Diamond, Crackling Rosie. No, I, I noticed there, they, they've split, haven't they, Diana Ross? Yeah, the yeah by this point. They're, they're climbing a ladder to the roof and she's climbing a mountain. <laughs> sure, that's just, there just isn't one that's high enough for her. Yeah, there's, uh, there's just metaphors in there somewhere. Yes, I'm yeah. aiming for this mountain, you can get on your roof. But, oh, I'm up here, mate. I can't imagine that uh, climbing the roof is anyway near as good as ain't no mountain high enough. And, uh, mm. I'll have to I'll have to do my research. Um, then we have Neil Diamond, Crackling Rosie for th- for one week. Mm. Uh, the Jackson Five again. I'll be there. Uh, number five. The Partridge Family. I think I love you. Right. Uh, number three. Now. Um, Big on telly then, weren't they? Yeah. And also, I remember Voice of the Beehive covered I Think mm. I Love You. They did rather a good version in the mm. very early 90s. Um, then we have Smokey Robinson, The Miracles, The Tears of a Clown at number two. Mm-hmm. Now, I think that came out later in the year than it came out in the UK. Mm. And then um, a name that hasn't come up, I, I, whether it gets to number one in the UK next year, I can't remember. But, uh, and funny, really... This would have been number one almost exactly as the Beatles announced they had split. Mm. We have George Harrison, My Sweet Lord, ah. um, which was number one for four weeks, although I think that does go into 71. So. We, we like a bit of George. We like yeah, a bit quite of George. a... That's the one that got uh, that got um, accused of um, plagiarism um, mm. and, and, and he had to... They went mm. to court and back, back all that. Mm. Yeah. Probably, uh, to be fair, played well in the Midwest as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for 1970. Well, Obviously, there were lots of other albums that came out, but uh, well, it's been it's been quite the in. year. Yeah. It has been quite the year. Yeah. Before we go, I need to uh, excite you slightly by um, telling you some of the people who 
had number ones in 1971, which we were... 1971! Yeah, we've got uh, number ones in 71 by Clive Dunn. Uh, Dunn! Uh, George, George Harrison. Harrison! Uh, we, I think we know what that one might be. Um, <laughs> we've got another another Mungo I've Jerry. I've forgotten by the time. I have no memory for anything anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, Paul, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've got another Mungo Jerry. We've got mm-hmm. um, a T-Rex number one. We've got uh, Dave and Ansel Collins. We've also got Tony Orlando and Dawn. And we've also got Middle of the Road. Um, (laughs) M-O-R. So good, they they basically made radio stations. Yeah. Uh, We've got Diana Ross. We've got The Tams. We've got Rod Stewart, Slade. And uh, to end the year, we have Benny Hill. (laughs) <laughs> so what well, a year so 1971 is going to be a classic year <laughs> yeah. especially if you're a milkman yes, or a granddad yeah, if you're yeah. a granddad milkman or you made up <laughs> both your Christmases are covered it's a, it's going to be a funny idea in 1971 that's for mm. sure uh, I hope there's some other songs that didn't get to number one that we want to talk about as well <laughs> oh, dear, well whatever anyway. they will they will tickle our our ear bones yes well brilliant um Martin, thank you for joining me. As ever, a pleasure. And uh, coming up after the end theme, we'll we'll have, of course, Ick will be covering some of the the big hits we've discussed. But uh, yeah. and we'll I promise, really one day we'll we'll get Martin to uh, <laughs> to duet with him at some point. But anyway, the only trouble is if Martin does it, he, he might be too in tune, and then we might get copyrighted. But uh, I don't think. I don't think it's it comes, a, comes that close to the notes. It's so. not often that I've been accused of being in tune. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, sir? Slap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. well, we will be back for 1971 soon. And uh, thanks again for listening. And uh, yes, see you again. Bye bye for now. You take care. Bye bye. Eek, uh, how does it feel like starting a new decade? What do you mean? Well, it's a new decade. You're singing the big hits of 1970. It's uh, pretty exciting, I'd have thought. Oh, I don't know. Each decade is quite similar, really. Really? You think so? Well, I don't know about that. Maybe, uh, maybe that's what it seems like to you, Eek, being an alien, looking in. On us people. What do you mean? Well, uh, I mean, I actually lived through some of these decades, and uh, uh, when you look back at them, you can see how things change. Fashions and, I don't know, things that people like and do, and, you know, uh, it all seems quite different. Well, uh, you might be right. Perhaps things are more different than I realise. But, uh, to me, it's just la 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 la. La 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 la. Yes, singing. It's all the same. Whether it be the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, noughties, 10s or 20s, or before the 1950s for that matter. Well, I suppose you have the right to say that. Anyway, I hope you've been practicing. I have. Been practicing very hard. I want to get it right. Uh, you know. You know, it's a new decade, and I want to go on as I intend to go on, or whatever the expression is. Yes, yes, well, it's good to make a, an effort, isn't it, uh, for the listeners? I want to make an effort for the listeners, yes. You do realise you won't be doing the whole of the 1970s? Oh, oh, <laughs> well, uh, well, yes, but uh, of course then, I, I know that Paul and Nick did half of the 70s 
and I did the singing for those episodes. So, so what you really should say is, you've already done half of it. It's not that I won't be doing half of it. It's already done. Oh yeah, I suppose so. I didn't think of it like that. Uh, yeah. Oh well. Uh, I suppose I better let you be. Yes, please. I need to rehearse. I need to get going. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you. I don't need luck. Yeah. Well, it's what people say. Anyway. All right. All right. Um. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, uh, coming up after the the theme music. Um. Uh, it sings the big hits of nineteen seventy. Yes. Yes. People know that. That's what they're here for. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, mm, probably. I don't know. <laughs> This show is part of the Pride 48 Network. Find more shows over at pride48.com. Oh, such mysteries. <laughs> He's crazy. Oh, yippee. I have a voice. I have a voice. You have a voice. You have a voice. We have a voice. We have a voice. Unique voices in podcasting. Univospods.net. Hello. It is me, Hick Aileen. I'm here to sing some of the big hits of 1970. The first one goes like this. Love grows where my rosemary goes and nobody knows but me. Papa. Ba 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 Uh, 
I hear you knocking, but I can't come in. I can't hear you. Oh dear. Um. Uh, I think I'm stuck. Oh dear. Uh, it, what's wrong now? I think I'm stuck. I can't remember. I don't remember some of these songs. Um, and I've forgotten the words. Oh, Eek. Uh, I, I beg to differ. I think you've done a marvellous job. Oh, Paul, thank you. Do you think I've done enough singing? I think you've done more than enough singing. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to spoil the listeners. You know, um, you know if, if you sing too many of the big hits from 1970, that they would expect it, you know, every episode. But Paul, um, I usually do sing for longer than I have. I have sung so far. Don't worry. Maybe I could sing a song that I know. Oh, Paul, are you sure? Yes, why not? I, 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 I'm I, sure that I can think of one of Harry's songs to sing. Oh, Paul, please, rethink this. Let me, let me, let me come up with something else. No, no, I'm sure. I'm sure there must be something. La, 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 la. Hey, Uncle John, press the fader. Put it down quickly. Before he does something he regrets. <coughs> oh, la, 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 um, la, 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 la. Um, yes, uh, th- th- this is a, a little song that I composed myself. Um, la la la, um, uh, 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 in the bleak with mint, no, in the bleak with, in, uh, la la la, <coughs> la la la. Turn it down, quick, turn it down. I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Oh dear, oh dear. La 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 la. In the blue, in the blue, with mid midwinter. So, oh, we've also got Grandad. So I've done. The, oh, ah. all right. Um, sorry, I've, I'm going to cut. Well, you left the classic to last, didn't I've got you? To there, cut, the so I'm going to have to cut that because that's the first number one of 1971. But it, oh. but it went into the chart in 1970. You left the classic till first. <laughs> Yes, but we, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll forget we to even mention that. No, no, we're, um, done. we're done with done. <laughs> oh, kitty, kitty, dearie. Purple, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> oh, I love Didi. This is just the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Flabbergasted. Flabbergasted.